All right, people, how's it going? Let me get you uh, an upload on uh, what's going on with these giant megaliths scattered to the four corners of the beautiful blue marble called Planet Earth. Message from the uh, Type 3 Society and how they did things. Anyways, an explanation for ancient stone protrusions and construction of megalithic walls. By yours truly, John Shaughnessy. How's it going, people? It's okay. Don't freak out here. Don't pull back. It's easy. Uh, it's going to be easy for you. I think, it, I think you're going to like this video. Anyways, uh, stone protrusions we're talking about. My laser beam died, so there you go. It's probably better anyway. You won't get dizzy watching me uh, bebop that thing all over the planet here. Uh, we're talking about large walls in Peru, okay? The stone protrusions, you can see these things were knocked off by, uh, you know, over overzealous uh, travelers, you know what I mean? If, you know, they wanted to take home a, uh, some kind of a souvenir, put it on a coffee table. Well, they didn't get all of them. There's still a few left. Uh, you get these protrusions, this is what we're talking about. This is construction. My... Uh, EDMI uh, port on my computer is a little messed up. So, this usually happens when you try to do something. You're trying to make a breakthrough, you, uh, all your uh, technological advanced uh, crap just falls apart on you. Lighting's gone, camera's gone, the video doesn't work good, now the computer's dying. So, we'll see if we can't make it through this presentation. Again, stone protrusions right here. Got my walking stick. Showing you where these things are. We're going to get into what these are and why they are on the walls. All right, a little at a time. I keep hitting the wrong button. There we go. There we go. Next one. There's another picture of more protrusions. Um, again, more protrusions here. break here people here we go uh, more protrusions right here on the bottom not so many they look like they've been rubbed out sanded down whatever on a lot of these uh, walls around Cusco Saxe Human you have a bunch of uh, you know protrusions a lot of them been uh, knocked off like I said by you know uh, overexcited tourists a couple of ladies walking uh, by the walls there and uh, that's Peru. We're going into Egypt now. Four corners of the planet. You can see uh, there's a lucky guy over here living a dream, going to the pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Uh, I've been to Giza, I've been to Egypt twice, but have yet to see a temple or a pyramid. Um, again, more stone protrusions on the walls. There's a few here and there. Basically, these things were poured. Um, there's a guy that put a book out uh, from, from Israel, an Israeli. These pictures are horrible here. Yeah, I blew them up too much, so. But again, you can make out the protrusions. But he did it, he was a material scientist. Very intelligent man, wrote a book. And uh, basically, he did a uh, microscopic analysis of a lot of the materials at these megalithic uh, sites in, in uh, Egypt and uh, come to find out they are not natural stone at all. Look the guy up on the internet, his name escapes me. Again, more protrusions, more beautiful people coming up to see the protrusions. God's beautiful children, look at them all. He's having a great old time. Uh, more pictures. I don't know why I'm getting a blank blue screen every time I click. It's maybe I'm bouncing that EDMI uh, cable around. So again, you can get a good picture, good view of the protrusions. Staircase, obviously, that has nothing to do with us or the video. And um, this is one of the temples. That was actually Menker's uh, uh, pyramid, GP3. This is, uh, I think, that might be part of the Asarian temple. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, more protrusions. You can see them scattered about on some of the walls. Um, again, I think a lot of them were rubbed off just for aesthetic reasons. We have um, more protrusions. 
around that temple. And Olio Tai Tambo, Oliante Tambo, Peru. Well, we're getting into the crooks of the biscuit chair. Stay with me. I know I'm, uh, I'm boring you, but I got to show you these videos, these uh, slide pictures, so you you get a little bit of understanding where, where we're going with it. Protrusions, protrusions, yeah, a couple of protrusions, a little fill of blocks, got protrusions. Uh, got a picture, much more focus, beautiful landscape and sky, wonderful. Protrusions, protrusions, protrusions in between. On the bottom, you got protrusions on the side. Okay. Uh, got a protrusion here. You have like a little bit of a, a, stu a step, and then steps, an inverted step going down and the steps going up. Uh, more evidence that these were poured into a mold. I, I will show you the molds in a couple more uh, slides. Ancient forms and stone mold technology in Peru. Okay. We just saw these on the side of those Oliantambo uh, molds, um, uh, stones rather. These were used when they poured those giant uh, megalithic walls. They're, they're about three, I don't know, they're about 20 feet high, probably who knows how many uh, tons. And um, there's another picture of one right here. Again, these are, you can see the precision uh, grooving in these uh, molds. So they, what they would do is they would put these molds, you know, up in forms, using the H blocks, hold them in place, and pour their, uh, pour the, um, you can see an opening for the fluid to come in here, or it would come in through the, through the front. Probably, well, that was probably fixed. Excuse me on that one. I get off topic. Again, the molds were not poured. These molds were actually cut out of dolerite with diamond tip uh, blades stuff is unbelievable. They would, they would pour, you know, whatever material in, inside these molds to, uh, you know, make uh, temples, megaliths, walls, and uh, who knows what else. So some of this stuff is just out of this world. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I know what a lot of this stuff is, uh, uh, you know, does and use and use for, but I'm not getting into that today. We're just going to get into this simplistic uh, construction techniques that uh, actually rival our techniques today. H-blocks. These would be called strongbacks today in the back of a form where you make a concrete form, you put the uh, two pieces of plywood in there and you have a strong back on the back. Well, these were, these are jigs, basically. They're big, giant jigs and they were used to uh, hold large forms together. I'll show you. Uh, more pictures of the old H-blocks right here. Big, giant, you know, uh, pretty well precision cut. They're actually tapered. They actually go out in a um, you know a V type of form in the back. So when you pour or put a um, a tie in, it wouldn't spread. That would hold it in place. Um, this is a um, a mold manufacturing facility. You would put your mold uh, forms up here. You would use bring your H blocks up in there hold the thing together and you would pour your polymers in there to make your uh, large stone castings for your temples and what have you. This is um, a mock-up of um, how the H-blocks were used and uh, you notice there's two walls coming down. Those are your outside form walls. The same thing that you make your concrete house with today. You make your, you put the forms up, pull the concrete in. The, you know, the, the technique is the same. Um, as far as construction, somewhat of the construction technique as we use today, but they use a, a much better um, technique so the uh, material does not get destroyed. Uh, we'll get into that. So H block here, H block here, form here, and this is your uh, polymer tie. This would be a tie that would go through into the H block slot, top of the H block slot, and um, you would pour your uh, polymer in there and these H blocks and forms, and uh, this would be a cross tie, would stop it from expanding up, okay? And when it cured, you broke it apart, you took it apart, and um, you know, you sh shipped it out to whoever ordered a giant megalithic stone out in the valley. Today's concrete form technology. All right, this is the 
uh, prehistoric stuff we use. We use an iron and steel. All of it has a uh, different coefficient than the uh, concrete that we're using. So when it gets cold out, it shrinks, and when it gets hot out, it expands more than the concrete. It's great. It's a great uh, scam for building bridges and roads and walls and houses and everything like that because it doesn't last because the, it just it just rips the stuff apart, falls apart, and then you gotta call the bridge manufacturer, uh, bridge uh, builders, rebuilders again, and uh, you know come back and fix the stuff. It's falling apart. Uh, if we use this technique that we're going to get into, their technique, you wouldn't have our uh, concrete bridges falling apart. Now everybody, yeah, steel gives it this, steel gives it that, but it, it you know, gives it strength. It does, but it ends up falling apart, so what, what good is it? Okay, so I'm just giving you uh, the basic. Here's the form on e this side, here's the form on that side. So this would be the polymer um, uh, cross tie, okay, that would tie into the H-block. So these would be your H-blocks, see these little... Uh, little uh, tie holders, strong backs, whatever you want to call them. Those are basically here's what they are. These are your H blocks, okay? They do the same thing as the H block up there in um, Tiwanaku and um, uh, Pumapunku. I think Tiwanaku's got all the H blocks. But anyways, here's a there's this strong back right there. That would be that would represent your H block. This is a, a form right here, just a piece of wood. And these are cross ties. These are steel cross ties. I'm talking about. But except they would use uh, the same material. They would make, they would cast long ties that would go through the mold and um, then they would pour the, the, the material and they would, you know, disconnect it and those were the protrusions sticking out. Wherever the, the mold or the H block was, that was the protrusion sticking out or the nubs or the whatever you want to call it. Um, this is your typical, the uh, concrete wall today of a, probably a house going up. Uh, you get your footing, you get your stone walls, you get your, uh, these are where the metal ties come through, they snap them off and um, basically, uh, you know, they, they patch them up with some kind of silicone, silicone or um, uh, hydraulic cement. It's really pathetic because it doesn't last. They end up uh, rotting and uh, become a source of um, leakage too. Over the years, we have, um, you know, again, there's the uh, metal rod busted off. Uh, you can see it's rotted out a little bit. And, uh, you know, basically it becomes a source of water getting in there. And if you're in the Northeast or in colder environments, you get water in there, it freezes, it starts breaking away the concrete, so it's not going to last the uh, stand the test of time, not like these. Uh, Giant megalithic walls are going through, uh, you know, interglacial and ice ages, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years without any kind of wear at all. The stuff they've done, um, it, they still don't. Uh, the analysis that that guy did in Israel, he he still couldn't identify like uh, many components that these uh, stones were made out of, even at the microscopic level. So um, whatever they were doing, it was uh, it was there to stand the test of time. Again, we're going to go back, make sure everybody gets this because it's going to be a test on Tuesday. This is the uh, construction technique they use. These are the H blocks. These are the ties that go in. They tie to the cross, they tie to the H blocks. The forms are on the side. The, the uh, polymer tie went right through the forms. And they poured the uh, polymer in to make the stone. Different shapes, different sizes, whatever they needed. That's how they made it. It's pretty simple. Um, again, this is the uh, manufacturing place. You have all your H blocks. You have big flat area, so you can put your forms in. You can put your H blocks in. You can tie everything together. Pour your polymers in there. Let it uh, cure. Break it apart. You know, and you ship it out to where whoever in the valley ordered a piece of uh, you know megalithic stone or something like that. So it's, it's it's not it's not rocket science really, but. Uh, this is again the H blocks. And we'll go back to uh, this guy looking at it. You know, what's up with this? How did they do that? What's going on? Well, they had diamond, diamond tipped uh, tools just like we had, except they, they were uh, much, uh, I, I think they're at a higher elevation of intelligence uh, or of technology than we are today. Obviously, you can see these are molds. They, you can see the uh, recessed area. So they were built to precision and locked in with uh, you know other jigs that would make up these models and um, 
yeah, that's it. Uh, we go right back again. You can see this in uh, Ali Alian Tambo. Um, you can see the uh, you know the image right there just breaking through. It's, it's pretty simple. It's as uh, you know simple as the day is long. The protrusions right there. That's so. Those are the protrusions. That's what the protrusions are. The protrusion, just to sum it up, is this. This is what's left over after you take the X block, X, the H block off. They left it there. Maybe it helped transport it, move it around. Who knows? 101 different uh, reasons for doing it. Anyways, my name is John Shaughnessy. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'm putting out a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff in my head, so I'm just dumping it. Uh, making videos. I got a bunch of videos coming out. We can get into uh, you know more on what these walls do later. I just wanted to you know get people uh, you know uh, to at least uh, look at the idea, the concept, and then we can move on to the uh, the other reasons of why they were doing this stuff. All right, my book links. Um, uh, you know, I got uh, I wrote Pyramid Gravity Force, and and there is something about the moon uh, that was co-authored with Wendy Salter, a good friend of mine. And uh, you can go to pyramidgravityforce.com or uh, tsatmoon.com. Get the latest uh, uploads on what the moon's for and what what the uh, what the uh, pyramids are doing. Really, man, the moon drives the interglacial and the ice ages. Uh, the Milankovitch cycle is, is uh, great, great ideas, but no mechanics, absolutely no mechanics whatsoever. Come on, people, you know? It's like them pushing Pangea, you know? Like, oh yeah, all the continents are on one side of the planet. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, come on. You can check out my other videos. I, um, I basically, I, I put a lot of good evidence out. I reject a lot of the, uh, you know, mainstream science because it, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's absolute lunacy. You know, we got we got to get off this, uh, off this, uh, you know, uh, runaway train, and uh, you know, that's going off the uh, going off the rails. It's not like uh, using a little common sense. I mean, I, you know, I put all the contents on one side of the planet, the, the planet would rip itself apart. I mean, it's just just common sense. Anyways, uh, you know, gravity, I get into gravity. Gravity has a self, uh, you know, a self-balancing mechanism in it. And it's throughout the universe. So, um, anyways, with that, I'll kind of leave you guys alone. With the, you got any, got any ideas, got any uh, comments, shoot it to me. I'm uh, wide open. Um, you know, be, be uh, you know. Be, uh, be honest and uh, let's see what we can get. We went, you know, this is all shifting the paradigm. We gotta move, we're way behind, way behind the times. So uh, we can, uh, you know, don't forget to uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And um, you know, my, my uh, videos are getting better, hopefully. I mean, they've been very crude. Obviously I had some equipment problems tonight, but uh, getting better, I get the lighting going on. And uh, who knows, I got this big uh, 60 inch uh, screen here. It's actually pretty good, I used to have the, uh, what do you call it? The projector. It was a, the fan on that thing was just driving me nuts. So now we get the silence. Now you can hear everything I'm saying. All right. Peace out, people.